Hello. Um, thanks, Thomas, for the uh, introduction, kind of introduction, and thanks, Stefan, for the kind invitation. It's my great pleasure to be at this MUFF 2022 meeting. It's my first time in this big community, so I really like this meeting and, and thank the organizers for uh, doing a fantastic job. So in my group, uh, we uh, work on developing uh, supermolecular materials in the case of framework materials, but you probably want to know where's that mess. So we are a Ivy League school in the United States. We're actually older than the, than the country United States. Um, and and uh, it's in the Northeast part. So if you have a Gordon Research Conference, it's often nearby and you are welcome to visit. Uh, in my research group, I have two research directions. One is developing supermolecular 3D printing materials. We also do a little bit of 3D printing of cuffs and muffs. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm mainly focused the time on the hydrogen bonded cross-link organic framework that I will share with you today. As a liberal arts type of Ivy League school, we also focus a lot on teaching and, and educational uh, development. Um, so one of the, the uh, summer project I just complete is 3D print this open framework models and using light projections, you can see the, the three dimensional pores along different axes. So it's a teenage uh, uh, mercury model that you can see all these framework materials. So if you have fun frameworks that you want us to print and add it to this library, we hope this can be demonstrated in a museum and educate teenagers and high, high, uh, undergraduate students to be excited about framework materials, right? Um, so my group is interested in developing h -cuffs. We draw inspirations from these two uh, a great organic material. It's one is cuffs, and we have a lot of you know pioneers in this conference. Um, these cuffs are made by reversible reactions using uh, you know one part po uh, polycondensation reaction often with crystallization. So you get uh, polycrystalline porous materials often. And another type of material is uh, hydrogen bonded organic frameworks, which use a hydrogen bond to direct the crystallization. Uh, there are pros and cons of each materials. For example, cuffs, it's still quite difficult to get single crystal structures, but for halves, you know, it's very easy to get structures, but, but it's kind of difficult to, uh, to uh, uh, stabilize it because of the relative weak hydrogen bonding. So if we look at this, uh, the mechanism proposed by the, the researchers, the pioneers in the field, they have uh, illustrated, uh, for example, for cuffs, there are different mechanisms. For example, for the bronic ester or bronic uh, uh, ester condensations, you have this irreversible stacking that uh, cause limited crystallinity, right? For the halves, the instability come from the removal of the, uh, the solvent molecules. If you remove the uh, solvent molecules from the voids, uh, often you can collapse the, uh, a pore. So we want to we want to combine their uh, uh, the advantages together and and balance the high crystallinity. In other words, we want to get single crystal structures for structure analysis, but we also want to get high chemical stability. So this is our HCOF design. We start with a half-like monomer. We have hydrogen bonding motifs, but in addition, we have the reactive size nearby it. Um, and in the next step, we crystallize this as molecular crystals. Uh, in the next step, we're diffusing crosslinkers to crosslink the reactive size in this molecularly porous uh, crystals and connecting them as edge cup materials. So you can see they are hydrogen bonded. They are covalently linked and they have a periodic structure. But what is pretty unique for this type of materials is that because they are doubly hydrogen bonded and covalently cross-linked, if you disrupt the hydrogen bonding uh, 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 network by gas molecules, the gas molecule can actually result in a swelling of the crystal, resulting in a, a, a lattice expansion and, and turn it into an amorphous material. But if you remove the gas molecule, because they are covalently stitched together, they come back as crystalline materials. So they have a very dynamic uh, 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 absorption capability. So uh, when we first start uh, with this idea, we also check the literature and we find uh, Jim West actually demonstrates some uh, the feasibility of this solid state reactions. And he showed using uh, um, uh, ILA melamine groups, he was able to cross-link with uh, propane disile and get uh, single crystalline materials. 
And this is a Sleeping Beauty work that has not been continued after you know, 12 years or 13 years. Um, and we come up with a very similar design. Um, we have this proposal groups uh, uh, connected to, to, uh, to uh, 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 the melamine core and they form the hydrogen bonding capability. And once they are attached to a rigid core, they form this porous network. And you can see the, the crystal structure of this network, which is also the 3D printed model that I show in the first slide. Um, we next performed a, a single crystal to single crystal transformation. We're able to cross-link these alkyne groups with, without any problem and converting them to dithyl ethers. And this dithyl ether is very stable against acid or base or other uh, chemical reagents. So we don't suffer from the same problem of uh, bronic ester or imine condensation resulted in the cough materials. But the, in the first model, we actually create a problem for our own is we generate a lot of steric genic center uh, that is completely randomly distributed in the, in the crystal. And this result in a huge problem when trying to solve the single crystal structure. And the end of the story is we didn't uh, uh, successfully obtain a single crystal structure, but we test our hypothesis against uh, gas molecules. As I mentioned earlier, you know, if you have a good hydrogen bonding disrupting uh, gas molecule that can interacting with the framework, disrupt the hydrogen bonding interactions, you'll be able to swear up the crystal. So we actually studied a, a variety of uh, gas molecules. We finally land on iodine and we did a control experiment using this control mo molecule and, and uh, did the AMR titration. We find out the binding constant in DMSO is actually quite high, 5,000 inverse molar. And through DFT calculations, we find out the halogen bonding is the origin of the strong binding affinity. So with this iodine in hand, we went ahead and test uh, the binding uh, of the HCOF-1 binding with iodine. As you can see here, HCOF-1 can remove the, the uh, iodine from aqueous environment very rapidly. And uh, at the time when we published this work in 2017, this hold the record of iodine absorption in aqueous environment, two grams per gram in HCOF-1. But what is important uh, is the, the, uh, the PXRD in, uh, showing us. As you can see from the B uh, uh, signal, uh, the, the HCOF-1 is a very crystalline material, but if you even absorb a little bit of iodine, it becomes amorphous, right? So the iodine is disrupting the hydrogen bonding network and turning it to amorphous material. And when you remove the iodine, it actually comes back. So we have this crystalline to amorphous to crystalline transformation. And this is reversible. But the problem is we didn't really solve the single crystal structure, which was our uh, initial motivation. So we went ahead and synthesized a different mo uh, monomer. In this case, we only have eight ILOG groups. And with using ILOG groups, we wouldn't run into the problem of generating a lot of steric genic carbons, and we'll, we hopefully can solve the single crystal structure. What is also interesting to us is if we vary the uh, disile lens, for example, from uh, SN disile to propane disile to butane disile, uh, we will be able to get uh, HCOFs of different linkage. And you may think in the solution, you, you're just creating macrocyclic structures with longer and longer linkage. But in the solid state, state uh, reaction is quite different. For example, you have four reactive sites, two of them are a little bit further away. So instead of uh, doing the same uh, topologically cross-linking, we can actually obtain different cross-linking topologies. So in this case, we can using same mother molecule to get different products uh, using the, uh, the solid state reactions. And if this topology is related to the, the properties, you should in principle see the iodine absorption will behave quite differently in the solid state. So we went ahead and synthesized this molecule, we crystallized this molecule, and you can see from the crystal structure, there are ILAG groups, which is color-coded in orange and red uh, in the open pore area. You also have the, uh, the green and uh, blue uh, ILAG groups that is in the more congested area. And when we uh, subject this to solid state photochemical reactions, they don't have any problem in reacting them in the solid state and we get beautiful single crystals. But the question is, 
can we solve the single crystal structure, right? So when we looking at uh, the single crystal analysis, uh, cross-linking in the pores is quite easy to assign uh, uh, through the direct method and we'll be able to assign the electron densities. But the, the problem is when we look at the, uh, the cross-linking happening at the more congested area, the single crystal analysis can suggest either way and the results become ambiguous. And when I show this results to my colleague Dieter Schlutz at ETH back in the day, he told me, Chen Feng, you're a young you know, researcher, don't publish half-baked stuff, right? So why don't you come to my lab, talk with my group members, and we probably can help you uh, design some experiment to better illustrate the uh, single crystal structures. So um, when I came back from ETH, I came uh, with this idea. Instead of having eight ILO groups, we chemically synthesized four ethyl groups uh, to replace four uh, ILO groups. And then we crystallize them, they crystallize in the almost exactly same manner as the eight ILO group uh, monomer. And we will be able to solve the single crystal structure. And using this as a control single crystal analysis, we can unambiguously assign the uh, single crystal structure of HCOP2 and HCOP3. So this is the result that I can share with you after two years of hard working. Uh, we, we're able to find this as a three-dimensional crosslink network. Um, we solved the single crystal structure. And uh, this topology was the first time uh, being reported. And so David actually uh, helped us to com uh, uh, confirm this topology and assign this as CDC1 Chemistry Diamonds College. Of course, this is happening before you know, COVID. Otherwise, I will give a, a, a suggest another acronym, right? Um, so we can also uh, cross-link the, the prop and disile with uh, the structure and obtain the single crystal structure as crystalline by layers. And soon you will see the crystal absorb iodine in a very different way. Okay, so on the top, you can see HCOF2 is a three-dimensional network. So it, uh, when it absorb iodine, it uh, isotropically uh, expanding three dimensions and uh, this crystal swells up. In contrast, HCOF3, which is a, a crystalline bilayer. So you can see the vertical stripes here, which is es essentially exfoliating the, the bilayers between each layers. So you can see their topology dedicate their uh, absorption capability. And, and they also being reversible, so they also have this crystalline to amorphous to crystalline transformation so if you remove the, the iodine uh, gas molecules. Okay. What I really want to emphasize here is a lot of times people think, you know, in this crystal structure, in this cross-link structure, the cross-linkers has to be very ordered. It is actually important to note here, the cross-linker is better to be more disordered. The reason is very similar to a, a polymer network. So when you stretch a rubber band, right? All the rubber bands are, are randomly orientated. So when you stretch it, it actually have a strong driving force to come back. The same thing applies to HCOF. If you stretch it, all these cross-linkers will be stretched in the entropy unfavorable conformation. So when they uh, resume their crystallinity, it actually provide positive driving uh, uh, force to allow them to come back. So this is uh, often something that also can explain what is happening in the MOF community when you post-polymerize a MOF, demethylate it and remethylate it, you are actually fighting with entropy to come back to a, a high crystalline state. <clears throat> But as a supermolecular chemist, I was not particularly happy with the, 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 the crystal engineer that we can do. We're using this melamine uh, 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 groups. They are hydrogen bonding donor acceptor donors. So they are not self-complementary. What happened if we can change it to a self-complementary case? So we protonate this uh, dimela, uh, di, uh, ila melamine groups to melaminium, right? So we change the DAD hydrogen bonding pattern to DDD hydrogen bonding pattern. And we'll be able to use the anions as AAA hydrogen bonding receptors to, to obtain a, a supermolecular architecture that you will be able to cross, uh, uh, generate uh, anion cluster connected uh, uh, framework materials. And the important message here is because they are anionically charged, so their 
clumping repulsion will help them to be easily disrupted. So you don't need a strong binding gas molecule like iodine to, re, uh, to destroy the hydrogen bonding capability. So we went ahead and synthesized this molecule uh, and we were able to obtain the, the single crystals of this monomer uh, with bisulfate anions. And we can solve the single crystal structure, which I'll show you later. This is a single crystal structure. As you can see, it has a, a quite reasonably large pore. Uh, but what I want to highlight here is the bisulfate anion cluster is actually forming alternating layers stacking on top of each other, uh, uh, not on top of each other, on, uh, through alternating layers so that they can form a hexagonal network. And then we went ahead and, and chemically cross-linked them with SN disyl, uh, short for EDT. Um, so on the left, you can see the crystal structure of after cross-linking and before cross-linking. They look incredibly similar. And uh, here we also encounter a new phenomenon. When, because we are expanding the pore size, we also uh, see the cross-linking happens in an in a un uncontrolled way that you need some optimization. For example, if you're diffusing two less uh, SN diacyls, you have some under cross-linking capability, uh, which will dissolve in MR tube. You can also have overreacted reaction that also uh, dissolve in MR tube. So you can, you can, uh, you can, um, um, uh, analyzing them through a solution phase AMR experiment. After optimization, you can obtain completely insoluble HCOF6, and they are optimized and confirmed by solid state carbon AMR, Raman, elementary analysis. And, and this elementary analysis is quite close to small molecule elementary analysis error range, so it's actually high uh, uh, accuracy. So we can confirm the, the chemical composition before we analyze the, uh, the crystal structure. But what is the dynamic behavior, right? So as I mentioned, this is anionically caster connected uh, uh, organic framework. So when we're using phenols to disrupt the hydrogen bonding interaction and uh, disrupt the, uh, the anion clusters, you can see the PXRD become amorphous, uh, recovers, amorphous, recovers, amorphous, recovers. And we using molecular dynamic simulation to, to find out that uh, having the phenol, they can actually uh, uh, locally pull the bisulfate anions through hydrogen bonding to the local position. And, and, and in the local position is very important because if you uh, wash these uh, 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 bisulfate anion out and put it back, they will not regenerate the crystallinity because again, you're fighting against entropy, right? So entropy is our enemy in the, in the, in the, in the reversibility in this case. Um, so I wanna show, uh, show you the, the visual um, effect. You can actually see this in real life. So this is under a microscope on the top left corner is a molecular dynamic simulation. The blue part is HCOF6 the green dots are phenols. So we are soaking this in a highly concentrated phenolic solution. You can see the crystal actually expand. And when you're using mesonol to wash the, the uh, adsorbed phenol, the anion cluster resumes and the crystal you can see in real time, uh, they actually comes back. And we have recycled this uh, process three times. So if you're interested, you can go to YouTube or my group website to check it out. We have three full cycles of this expansion and contraction. So other than bisulfate anions, can we using other anions to, to, uh, to template the uh, uh, covalent network formation? We also tried uh, nitric anions. And once we protonate the melaminium groups, uh, melamine groups to melaminiums, we can generate uh, this HCOF7 uh, uh, molecular crystal. This has not been cross-linked. And as you can see, uh, the, uh, the nitric dimers is actually forming uh, donor, 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 acceptor, acceptor, hydrogen bonding arrays. This allows us to control the, the network. And, and at the same time, I got a call from NASA consultant and he read our previous work of absorbing iodine. And he asked me, you know, in the space station, we actually using iodine to do anti 
uh, antimicrobial uh, 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 treatment can, can we use in this material to remove the iodine using the space station. But the challenge is uh, whether we can, uh, um, you know, using this to, to, um, to perform this at high temperature. So when I obtained this molecular crystal, you know, I was very excited. I think this is a, probably a solution because we have anions, we have charged framework materials. So we went ahead and, and crosslinked this network. And after crosslinking, you can see uh, uh, the, uh, the crystallinity was well resumed. Uh, we can obtain the single crystal structure. And again, I want to emphasize the crosslinker was somehow disordered, and we we often mod model this uh, 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 crosslinkers over several different positions. And and then we test whether we can use this to remove uh, treated iodine uh, for drinking purposes. Uh, we set up this column chromatography uh, uh, um, uh, setup. We we actually attach a big uh, a metal uh, uh, container. Uh, on top of the column so we can change the temperature because in the in the space station uh, they really want it using you know hot water and so you can get hot coffee directly without cool it down and reheat it up right so we, we test uh, at all temperature range this uh, material can do uh, quite well uh, iodine removal uh, at different temperatures so they uh, remove iodine very very efficiently okay so enough with the melamine uh, units. We have tried melamine, we play the, the super molecular tricks, but what about other uh, uh, hydrogen bonding directing components? In the uh, hydrogen bonded organic framework uh, 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 community, people also using this carboxylic acid dimer because it's a set for complementary hydrogen bonding motifs. And if you are using uh, uh, the left molecule, you can get a hydrogen bonded organic framework, but you have to carefully crystal engineer because they can easily interpenetrate. So we also synthesize a, 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 a ILAO ether appended uh, a molecular monomer and we crystallize them. Unfortunately, because of the hydrogen bonding formed through intramolecular hydrogen bonding, they actually don't form a framework. They are closed packed, right? So the question is, can we create extended framework materials? So we went ahead and uh, we introducing a, a tramestic acid. Tramestic acid has a very different pKa compared to the uh, this monomer uh, we have synthesized. And in this case, because of the, their pKa difference, we can actually force them to have a hydrodimerization instead of homodimerization. And 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 more, in addition, because they although they are C three symmetry, because they are mismatched, so they can also inhibit. Uh, interpenetration once they are stacked on top of each other. So we co-crystallize the structure. This is actually quite easy to co-crystallize. Uh, we uh, systematically increasing the tramestic amount. You can see this PXRD experiment. You can see a new phase emerged at one-to-one -one stoichiometry, and we were able to obtain the single crystal structure as a 1.6 nanometer large pore. And also, I, I want to mention to the interest of cough community that we find out in the C-axis, they don't, although they look like a completely Ex, uh, ex, uh, ex, uh stacking, but they actually have a, a, a five layers. They stack with a slightly offset. So this may give some insight for you know when you're trying to model the 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 calf along the c-axis that it, it probably have a, 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 some more options that the molecular entity can adopt. We went ahead and, and cross-linked with our SN dicyle, and we were able to solve the single crystal structure with very uh, uh, high resolution. And this was done in the in the synchrotron, and we will be able to find cross-linking A, B, C, uh, and D at different regions. And in certain regions has uh, uh, less disorder compared to, for example, uh, uh, cross-linkage B. Um, in this case. We can also uh, absorb uh, uh, gas molecules. Uh, this is a photo switch de developed by my colleague, Ivan Pehemian. So we can do solid state switching using this method. So this is my last slide. I, I, I want to draw some connections between our h cuffs and hydrogen bonding cross-link organic frameworks because they share hydrogen bonding interactions. 
They also have covalent cross linkages. This is very connected with the, uh, the uh, uh, cuffs. And we also have this dynamic behavior, very similar to traditional polymers, right? So what we want to do next, I want to share some of the, the directions we're heading to is we're interested in type of chemical reactions go beyond sign-in cross-linking and sign-on cross-linking, similar to 2D polymers that has been represented in community. We want to do isoreticular expansion, very similar to MOFs and COFs, because in HOFs, it's very difficult to do so. And Com uh, compared to polymers and membranes applications in real life, we also wanted to study their fatigue resistance because they have this dynamic capability. Okay, in the last, I want to thank all my collaborators. We are a, a, a very small chemistry community uh, in, in at Damas. I, 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 a lot of uh, work is actually done through collaborations and my hardworking uh, graduate student and postdocs. And I need to thank all the funding agency to support our work. And thank you very much for your attention. Great, thank you very much for this uh, really inspiring lecture, uh, bringing a new vistas into the COF uh, construction uh, game. And now the floor is open for questions, please. So you said you wanted to find some new things for the donor acceptor donor of the melamine structure. So have you tried cyanuric acid, which is a very typical uh, thing for using with mel melamines? That's a great suggestion. We have we have tried, and we have a structure that is uh, under construction, but uh, we haven't solved the crystal structure, so I, I couldn't share it here. Do we have other questions? There's one. Anna. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for this. Very nice talk. Uh, can you say something or comment on the porosity? Is there permanent porosity on the crystals and is this also recyclable? Yeah, so we have find uh, in, in these uh, frameworks that nitrogen absorption is surprisingly low. We don't know why we're still investigating that, but these uh, uh, framework materials can all absorb uh, uh, organic vapors from uh, and, and water vapors from toluene into water. So we all test their vapor absorption number. We couldn't get the BET surface area out of uh, this vapor absorption. Uh, um, we, we have a few hypotheses that I can share with you offline um, that why this may inhibit the nitrogen absorption. We're still working on that. Um, for, the, for the reversibility is, again, is entropy. So if you if you uh, contract the framework very rapidly, you then fall into a kinetic trap, right? So you will get a, a shrink network, but it's not crystalline um, uh, because your entropy was will not lose as much. If you want to reversibly contract it, you want this re, uh, 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 con contraction process to be reasonably slow, so uh, the, the the molecules to to uh, uh, the molecular entity in this H cups can orientate themselves to to help recover. Very good. That was very educational. Um, also, the word entropy uh, came up here as an actor. Uh, very good. So um, with that, and in the interest of time, uh, let's thank our speaker again for this great talk.